guys and gals, and here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Wayfinder. Anyway, y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to your mini Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Alrighty. Maybe the monotony will be broken a bit. I get out of bed to feed Linus and get ready to head to campus. The commute to campus seems faster than usual, what with all the new things to mull over. Beating a wolf giant is an interesting item to cross off the bucket list, not that I ever planned for it. Moreover, there's that odd dream to consider. At chasing the sun? Free. Who was it, who was it they said? Fenrir? That was definitely unusual, and I'm not entirely convinced it was just a dream. I walk up to the stairs and head into the building proper on my way to the campus library. I have a few hours left until my only class for the day, but I wanted to head in early to try to study in a location that doesn't remind me of the whole mess that yesterday was. As I'm walking down the nearly empty hall, I begin contemplating whether or not I should call my mom to tell her about everything that happened. Suddenly, I'm roughly shoulder-checked and almost fall, but manage to keep my footing. What the hell? I turn to see some big guy wearing a jacket for the college football team laughing as a group of four of his fellow varsity members approach me, surrounding me as I stand back to the wall. One of them moves aside, letting through the last person I wanted to see. Well, 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 if it isn't Dick Breath. If there was any doubt before his grand entrance, his voice assures me of his identity. By him of all people. Oh, wow, he definitely looks a lot different. A vastly different sprite. He approaches with a smug look among his group of equally smug lackeys. Looks almost comical the way he resembles some teen movie jock and bully all at once. I am not in the mood. Fuck off, Tucker. I try to brush past him, but he grips my shoulder tight and roughly shoves me up against the wall. He's bigger than me, so pushing him off isn't an option. I squirm to get free of his grip, but thanks to our history, I know I'm not going to get off that easily. Oh, come on, Finn. You know you aren't going to get off that easy. I feel his fish punch the wall right next to my head and I wince, letting out a gasp. Guys, watch closely. This part's my favorite. After I scare him enough, he starts to cry. He's right. It's something I feel loath I feel loath to admit. Him being bigger than me is intimidating. Even knowing I'm a few years older and pretty scrappy in a fight, I don't know if I can outright take Tucker by himself, let alone his whole group. Still, I don't think he'd share something like that. Something he learned in private. Something he learned at a pretty heated moment after I upset him because I didn't want to go on with the relationship that I couldn't tell anyone about anyone I was in. Something that I could be something that I could so easily twist to implicate him. I get an idea suddenly. I definitely can't get him off me, but I can humiliate him in front of his homophobic friends. Consequences be damned. Or I could tell him off, snap a bit, and make a scene, hoping to call attention to us from an instructor. Either way, once I get an opening, I need to make a getaway as soon as those bozos are distracted. There's no way I can fight them all on my own. <clears throat> Scold. Oh, that's just like you. Is that the best you can do? Tucker looks at me in shock and his friends stop laughing. Last I checked, you were the one crying like a bitch into my arms while you were drunk because you were scared these dipshits would find out your little secret. Take it now. Water time. <clears throat> I motion toward the aforementioned dipshits. And then you lied to your parents about me corrupting you so they'd aim all their ire at me. His face unfurls into a look of shock and his voice gets low and a bit more threatening. You better shut up. You better shut your... I hold up a finger to his mouth and look him in the eye. Don't interrupt me. After everything we've done together alone, I know you better than any of these goons by now. Tucker looks around as the few people in the hallway stop and give disappointing looks. Let's not forget that you were the one who asked me out, Tucker. He's finally come to his senses, getting mad at being put in his place in front of his friends. The hall suddenly quiets down. Maybe I'm too good at making a scene. Shut your face or I'll do it for you, fag. I laugh at this, emboldened by his reaction to my prodding, but still a bit cautious of him. Oh! Big Bad Tucker is gonna hit someone. What a shocker! You push your weight around, pick on guys smaller than you, even threaten me into silence to impress these assholes, and for what? All because you couldn't handle the fact that they're just not going to feel as comfortable in dressing in front of you when they realize, right? That does it for Tucker. The implications were enough to anger him. He pulls back his fist, ready to try to hurt me, but is caught by a furry silver paw-like hand. My gaze- ooh, nice! Yeah, I like that. My gaze shoots over to the person who intercepted the punch, a lithe wolfman with silver fur and azure blue eyes that lock onto mine. He's not as tall as Arkin, but he's still a bit taller than me. This doesn't help- this doesn't help make him look intimidating, as he's still a bit shorter than the goons surrounding us. 
Nevertheless, he turns and stares Tucker straight in the eye. Get lost, or you will have a lot worse than a scolding to recover from. The goons laugh, clearly not intimidated by this wolf man's size. I have to wonder what they see. They're looking at who I'm looking at, and not being scared off. Tucker just laughs in his face. Ha! Dudes, kick this guy's ass while I deal with Finn. While he's still looking away, I take my shot. My knee gracefully glides up, upward into Tucker's groin with such force that I see his eyes cross. I manage to duck under Tucker's arm and run past the goons as they watch their leader being wolf-handled. I'm halfway down the hall when I glance back in time to see the goons knocked off their feet by the wolfman before he begins running after me. He had taken the opportunity my getaway provided to bend Tucker's arm against his back, then after twisting Tucker around in place, threw him into the group of varsity goons. They're up in a few seconds running after us, with my new companion and I already rounding the corner. We make it through a pair of double doors, then turn into another hall with an exit at the end. However, I know this exit. It's a, it's a long run around the building, and there was a parking lot just outside with loads of cars, through which the goons would likely spend a long time searching. Instead of going outside, I open a janitor's closet halfway down the hall and hold the door for my lupine companion, quickly slipping inside myself, inside myself and shutting the door behind us. There you go. Out of breath, but trying to be quiet, I cover my mouth as I try to slow my breathing down. The wolf sharing a closet with me isn't having much trouble at all, likely having a full, uh, likely having a life full of cardio. I whispered to him as he listens to the hallway through the door. Phew! Thank you for the assist, wolf man. A wolf giant. A wolf man implies that I am a werewolf, but we do not... I hold up a hand for him to pause, and sighing as I realize I'm 0 for 2 with these wolf giants. After all, I've heard this before and really should have known better. You don't really associate. Right, sorry. I'm still not used to seeing you guys. So, Mr. Wolf Giant. Yes, Mr. Finder. I walk up to him and look him square in the eye as well as I can in the dim light, holding out my hand. Thanks again. Name's Finn. What's yours? He takes my hand with his paw and surprisingly he shakes it. My name is Gerald, and it is my pleasure. I cannot stand the sort of men who would unfairly group up on someone smaller than them. I smile. This meeting was going a bit more smoothly than the one I had last night, although to be fair to Arkin, by the end of it we were on better footing. How long have you been a finder? You are not surprised to see me, but cannot tell what I am at first glance. That is unusual. I almost shy away from answering. His almost noble way of speaking has caught me off guard. I decide that maybe being honest will, will open him up for some answers of my own. About ten or so hours now. Just found out last night, actually. He seems to take this in, reflecting on it, but still keeping an ear up for the hallway. Oh! You have met another wolf giant before me, yes? That is the only thing that makes sense. Otherwise, you would have been quite shocked. I am sure of it. How many of my kind have you met? I met one last night named Arkin. He was pretty off-putting at first. He followed me home from the park, but it turns out he saved my life from... Well, I don't really know who it was. Actually, you saved my ass, too. Thanks again! Gerald seems displeased, and I soon find out why. His noble gravitas drops, but not by much. Damn it, of course that vessel line wolf found you. I just noticed little tassels. That's cool. No matter. He'll be but another obstacle to overcome. I was hoping he would fail out before the trials, though at least it is not a wolf of the bear bloodline. What? I feel so I feel lost, so I decided to try to ask a few questions myself. What did you mean about the trials? How many of you wolf giants are around, and why are you all appearing so suddenly? He lets out a low grumble and looks through the door as he opens it a crack. You will have your answers in time. As soon as another wolf giant finds you, we three will be qualified for the real trials. Great. More non-answers. Gerald looks back over to me with an inquisitive look. Do those pricks hurt you? I could have handled them myself, but I might not have been able to avoid maiming them. It was smart of you to start an escape when you did. There you go. Hmm. Ah, throat is a little bit sore today. A lot of water. You have good senses, find <clears throat> Finn. I'm not used to guys complimenting me, so this catches me off guard. Honestly, I only ran because I knew I'd get my ass handed to me if they were all were to attack at once, but it ended up impressing him. No, I'm okay. And thanks for stepping in, by the way. <sighs> it was nothing. You did not exactly wait to be rescued, though. Your dirty tactic is what allowed us the chance to flee. Joe smirks at me and looks back outside. He pokes his head out and gives me a thumbs up as he opens the door for us to leave. So, why was that barbarian trying to dent your face? I roll my eyes. 
He wouldn't answer my questions, but now I'm answering his. That barbarian is my ex-boyfriend. Jeff looks at a wolf whistle. Well, shit. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, he's a self-hating dude bro who I honestly never should have given the time of day to. I've wasted a few months trying to get him to be more comfortable with himself and me for that matter. One night about three weeks ago, he heard a rumor about himself from one of the guys on the, ju on the junior varsity football team accusing him of being a gay. Gerald Snickers, I don't blame him. Tucker was being absolutely ridiculous, but that wasn't the half of it. I already kicked the guy's ass pretty badly, then turned his anger toward me. He stormed through my door and began to threaten me, saying I don't realize what I've done and actually threw a book at my head, nearly missed me, missing me by a hair. I should never have given him a key, but I've since requested and received a lock change. I sighed, looking back toward where, where we had run, where we had run from, and then where we had hidden and shrug. Our relationship is anything but amicable at this point. Ironic, isn't it? What is ironic? Someone stuck so far in the closet he didn't think to check inside this one for us. And Sheriff lets out a snort and pats me on the shoulder. Well, you seem to be able to handle him on equal terms at the least. Gerald walks toward the direction we had come from, and I follow suit. As we walk, I find his eyes watching me, but darting away when I look toward him. I strike up some more conversation. So, are you a student here, or did you just come here to, um, find me? The lupine's black lips uh, lift into a smirk, thankfully enjoying my cheesy pun. Both, actually. Now that I've found you, I will need to keep using glamour magics to appear as a student, like I am doing now. This way, I can remain in proximity to you and the other candidates. Gerald stops for a second, likely feeling that my heart skipped a beat at the mention of proximity. You need not worry. We will not be intrusive. And the trials will be well, the trials will fit around your life. And whichever candidate finds you last will also remain here under glamour. The real trials will begin when you are ready. Hmm. I take this into consideration. I still don't know if I want to have any part in this. I know next to nothing about candidates or trials or even what exactly a finder is, but hearing that it won't ruin my plans is sort of a plus, I hope. I suppose. Is that a conscious decision of whomever is running these trials? Why can't you tell me more? Gerald sighs and pats my shoulder. His paw-like hand feels warm but heavier than I expected. His proper way of speaking also seems to drop off as he softly speaks, as though he were lowering a curtain to let me peek behind. And like I said earlier, you'll learn all you need to in time. Please, Finn, go about your day as normal, and remember that while I won't be following you, I will be keeping an eye out for you. I won't let the Barbarian or his cohorts harm you. He ruffles my hair. I don't even bother swatting his hand away as my cheeks begin to warm. My hair is already ruined by the time my reflexes even consider kicking in. Gerald walks on as I watch, disappearing around the next corner with an elegant flick of his tail. I sigh and turn into the nearby doorway, heading into the campus library. Time to study. I sit at a desk along a wall with a railing up above. Bookshelves line several paths perpendicular to the long desk, held into place by several pillars at each end. I like to sit over here as a few years ago there was an accident in which bookshelves dominated and injured a few people, so over here is the most safe place in such an event. It's a pretty stupid phobia, admittedly, but the kind of day I've been having warrants caution. I was studying and managed to get a few good chapters read in just an hour, but now, I still have about an hour and a half to kill before I have to leave, so I decided to humor myself and look into anything related to wolf giants or werewolves or wolf people in general. I find one horror story called The Wolfening by Yancey Oates about a werewolf who gets killed in a hit and run by a couple and is avenged by his family of werewolves. There's another, also horror adjacent, called Howling Hyena by Jorgen Kinkiner? Kinkiner? Jorgen Kinkiner. Which starts out as a romance story but turns into a coming of age story. It's to be about a girl who's kicked out of, her, out of her family but, in the midst of a slasher story on a ski lodge, makes a found family with a pack of werewolves. Alright y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye